Hello and welcome to B2B Revenue Leaders. I'm your host, Dustin Tizik. This podcast is brought to you by Testimonial Hero. Let your customers sell for you by creating strategic video testimonials that address common questions, fears, and doubts at all stages of the buyer's journey. Learn more at testimonialhero.com. On this episode, I'm joined by Derek Osgood, who is the founder of Ignition. Ignition is a collaborative go-to-market platform helping product and marketing teams get new products to market faster and more effectively. We chat about how product is really a marketing function, the biggest mistakes companies make when launching products, and why roadmaps often go off the rails. On to the episode. Hey, Derek. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dustin. Pumped to chat. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. A little sad you're not wearing the astronaut uh, helmet that you have on your LinkedIn profile, which is a little bit sad, but <laughs> good, yeah. good to see your face. I need to get one of those. I actually like, really, I, I have a little like neon ignition sign, but I need to get a, like an astronaut helmet that I can throw on. for all It's, it's part of the brand now. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And we're going to talk about, you know, mostly about product marketing product in a variety of ways. We're probably going to hop around a bit, mm-hmm. but something you said earlier that caught my eye that I wanted to you know, get you to expand upon is you mentioned product as a marketing function. Yep. So product people might be freaking out about that. What do you mean? No, it's funny. I mean, like I view, so Product and product marketing and like marketing in general, I think, you know, they've had this like funky divergence that's happened in the last like 10, 15 years. And it's funny because like everybody points at like Steve Jobs, for example, I was like, you know, the greatest marketer of all time, but like Steve Jobs is a product guy. And, you know, I, I think like when you think about what made him so great was mostly about like how, you know, just deeply he understood like customer needs and like how deeply he translated the things that he built into like effective stories. And so it's like the marriage of product and marketing is really where great marketing comes from and it's where great product comes from. And so when I think about like product as a marketing function, I think what I mean by that is basically, you know, product teams today have kind of evolved, especially in tech. Like this is not true of like every industry. Like when you talk about CPG, CPG is still like one role, it's brand management. and It does yeah. product and marketing together, but I think, you know, when you think about like where these roles have diverged in tech is like pr- brand management broke out into two roles, like a marketing team and a product team, because there was just so much work involved in like just managing the engineering work that was happening on building the product. And so product management has become much, so much more of like an engineering facing role than it, you know, traditionally was if you look 20 years ago. And I think like what that's caused is it's caused, you know, this break in the way that product is handing off to marketing and that now marketing teams are actually becoming much, much more externally facing and they're becoming kind of like a lot closer to the tactics that are being used to promote the products that are being built. And, you know, like when I think about product as a marketing function, it is really about product being like marketing in the lens of figuring out the right thing to build for your market because you under like marketing in the sense of I am understanding very deeply the customer needs that are being, you know, met by my product that, you know, existing competitive tools are not meet that are not, they're not meeting and translating that into building the right thing, then communicating that thing back to that market. And so like, you know, that's where I think product has, it, it should be more of a marketing function. And I think, you know, some of the like, very best orgs that I, I've seen, you know, at, at doing products, they actually almost even org product underneath marketing, you know, like, and so Airbnb recently, you know, there's a whole big kerfuffle around Brian Chesky, like renaming product management, product marketing, because they were going back towards that merged role where product management is actually responsible for marketing every bit as much as they're responsible for building the product itself. So that's kind of like where my, where that take comes from. I, I don't think like product management, like by any means should go away or report to marketing. It's just, I think marketers need to be closer to products and I think product needs to be closer to marketing. Yeah. It's like I, I've worked at companies where I've seen a lot of that. And I think it, the interesting thing to me there at least is both kind of went divergent directions. Like you said, marketing went external product went, I'm going to build these things and work off my roadmap. And both got far away from the customer and the poor customer kind of sat in the middle. Right. So I think that's a good segue. Then you mentioned, you know, bringing those two teams closer together sounds really simple, but is also probably really hard. So any tips on how companies can do that and do a better job of understanding the customer? Yeah, it's extremely hard. I mean, I think, you know, it's funny, like that divergence that you kind of just highlighted, it's caused this big giant, like gap inside of companies where, you know, like 
product is so focused on, in, on building the product and on engineering and marketing is so focused on promoting the product and the tactical work that they're doing to execute on the campaigns and sales is so focused on selling that there's not really like clear connectivity between those three teams. Mm -hmm. And so information doesn't flow effectively. And so oftentimes like marketing is building campaigns completely independent of what is actually getting built and shipped on the product side of the house. And they don't have clear visibility into what product is doing, like much less when those things are actually shipping, when they're promotable, like how to promote them. So, you know, basically like I, I think companies end up just getting this wrong by not focusing enough on that like internal orchestration that happens around shipping product and sales and success suffers the most because sales and success has to talk about the product to their customers, yeah. but nobody tells them that it's even live until, you know, a customer shows up on a call and is like, oh, what's that thing? Like, how, do, how does that work? And sales yeah. don't even know that it exists, which makes the company look bad. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't give that customer a lot of confidence that the company actually is going to be able to meet their needs effectively. So, you know, I think, I think the, the best ways to solve this is if you're not actually organized, like orging the company in a way where, you know, product and marketing are very, very tightly joined at the hip, then you need to build systems to get information from product to marketing super effectively. So you need to maintain like a centralized launch calendar internally that covers all the like major minor releases that are happening. That needs to include context. So the why you're actually building the thing that you're building, which means all of your research needs to be directly accessible within the context of your road mapping and your actual like launch planning. And then you need to have somebody who's actually driving and pushing that information outwards across the rest of the organization, because all those cross-functional teams are so buried in their own like tactical work on a day-to-day -day basis, and they all have their own priorities. So you need to actually be like proactively communicating that across the organization, because otherwise people just don't pay enough attention to it to be able to action it. And so that's where like, I think the role of product marketing has popped up in recent years. I mean, it's not a new thing, but like it's become dramatically more important as companies have realized how critical this like sales product marketing orchestration is to the success of their products. And so product marketing is kind of the one who tends to like own and drive that internally. And so companies are starting to realize that like it's some, one of the most important functions that they can invest in. Yeah, and a lot of that, I agree with that. I think a lot of it was on the output side as well. Like, how do we get this data to CS, to sales? One of the more eye-opening things for me, like I've worked in marketing for many years. We were small, so I did product management there as well. Now I'm back overseeing sales and marketing. Most eye-opening thing for me is I didn't listen to enough customer calls when I was yeah. solely marketing. Now yeah. I'm listening to like three or four calls a day and like, holy shit, I actually understand the customer. This is weird. <laughs> so I think that input side is is important. And that's maybe even harder, especially yeah. in a large org, to categorize and catalog that feedback. So any tips there on how to get those inputs from sales and success? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me. Like, I talk to marketers that don't ever talk to customers. And yeah. I'm like, how do you even do the job? But, you know, you should be talking, as you said, like, you should be talking to or listening to at least one customer call a day as a marketer. Yeah. No, full stop. <laughs> and so I think, like, getting that information out is is interesting you know there's one way is by actually going and sitting on customer calls and actually like going and engaging directly with customers and talking to your customer success team and saying hey who are the five customers that i should talk to this month you know about this new feature that we're building and go get on calls with them directly that's the best way to do it obviously that requires a lot of effort and so the other way that you can do this is now there are a bunch of great conversational intelligence tools you know that and like your sales team is probably using some kind of transcription tool to mm -hmm. document all the customer calls that they're having and that is making its way into your crm and so you should be there there are tools now and like ignition does this you know but my company we will extract information from those customer call transcripts so we'll integrate into those tools we'll pull it into the platform We'll apply some you know, generative AI over the top of it and we'll extract key takeaways and we'll understand like, okay, of customers that you talked to this month, like what were the biggest feature requests? What were the strengths and weaknesses that they're communicating about your product? What are the things that they're confused about or the, the words that they're using to talk about the thing? So we'll extract all those insights. We actually have a big thing coming up in about two, three weeks that we're launching where we basically are going to extract key 
feature like deal blocking features from your CRM data, as well as from your, those customer conversations, add those to your roadmap, allow your product team to prioritize the features that they're building based off of the actual like deal value that could be unblocked by them. And then when that thing ships, like we'll go back and notify the individual sales reps that are responsible for those deals with the notifications that says, Hey, you you have X, Y, Z deals that just got unblocked by this feature. You should go close those. And I think like really where, where companies get this wrong is they're not getting, they're not making those insights accessible to people. So they just kind of build things in a vacuum and then they don't close the loop back to the people who actually have to talk to customers so that that, that thing actually gets communicated when it gets built. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's really interesting thing you're, you're building because I like how it's pulling from more of an organic source. So, you know, I've been in companies where we have a feature request forum or, you know, use Pendo or use whatever tool to do that. Yeah. It's only a certain type of customer who's actually going to submit a feature request. And it's going to be heavily skewed to that type of customer, depending on the company you're at. Yep. So that is an interesting way to tie it all together and especially action it because I had free form fields of, you know, what are the blockers on this deal? Yeah. 500 different things in there. So when does that, that come out? When is that going yeah. to be available? So it's probably going to be either last week of August, first week of September, somewhere in there. So I think we're, I think we're most likely going to be first week of September. Uh, we'll be okay. Perfect. Yeah. So for our listeners, this episode will go live late August. So kind of perfect timing if you do want to check that out. And then I do want to, I want to save a bit of time for product launches because I think that's an important thing. Uh, you did mention roadmaps a couple of times and I feel like it's a disservice if we don't talk about roadmaps because they're maybe a little controversial. Yep. Curious, like what are people doing wrong there? Speaking from my personal experience, when does a roadmap just get too damn long when it's not actionable anymore? Like, yeah, what is your suggestion there? Yeah. So, I mean, like, Company, there's a lot of things companies get wrong when it comes to road mapping. I think, you know, like, like you said, one of the big ones is you use road mapping as your task management and you're basically like yeah. just getting granular to the point where it's not, things aren't features, they're, they're parts of features. And, you know, yeah. like nobody really cares about even the feature level stuff, you know, like customers care about what are the capabilities that this thing is unlocking for me and like, what is the larger story and how this like delivers value to me. So I think the biggest thing that companies get wrong, this is like a combo of a road mapping problem, but also a go to market planning problem is, mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't create like the right conceptualization around what is a feature, what is a product, what is a release, what is an announcement and a launch. Right. And so yeah. All those things are different and like you can release something to a customer but not launch and announce it because you have not actually like made a more public statement about the thing actually existing and that's totally fine like that's just a soft launch so i think you know like where companies like should be prioritizing this stuff is like one your roadmap should be focused on customer capabilities that are unlocked not necessarily like functionality that's getting built Two is you need to have a release calendar and like a roadmap for the product. And then you also need to have a launch calendar, which is the roadmap for the customer, which is what does that, what are the things that are actually going to be announced? Not necessarily the things that are going to be shipped and released. And this is where like, you know, a lot of companies, they try and use their, their, their product roadmap, which is what are the things that are getting built and released as the thing that they're communicating to like sales and yeah. success and marketing and like, those teams don't care about that stuff. You know, they, they care about what is, I, I, can, I can't give 500 messages about all the different things that we've built to my customer. What are the one or two most important things like this quarter that I should talk to them about? Because those are the one or two things that are actually gonna move my deals from, you know, pipeline to closed one. And so, you know, that's where, that's where I think like product marketing, their job is to obviously like translate and interpret, you know, the product roadmap into something that's more of a go-to-market roadmap. But if you don't have a product marketer doing that, you need to, as an organization, align on what is like a go-to-market announcement versus what is just something that we're releasing. Yeah, and I, I think the translate part is key there because I've seen so many where, you know, I just don't know what it is. Refactor, library, X, like, what yep. does it do? What is the point of this? Right. And it's, that's why product marketing to me is a really hard job because you have to understand both sides. And a lot of that is just asking the questions. Yep. You're never going to fully speak developer, mm -hmm. but, you know, understanding that is super important. And then, you know, you mentioned launch. So I, I do want to spend some time on that, partly selfishly, because we have a soft launch we just did. So I want to learn a little bit there. But what are some mistakes you find on the product launch side when they actually want to launch it to the public? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think like biggest one is companies just don't have process for this. You know, they, they just don't have any like repeatable motion. So cross-functional teams don't know how to engage with it. Like sales doesn't know how to even like think about like getting information out about how do I talk about this product or this feature, you know, like marketing doesn't really know like how does this lar this thing that we're launching fit into our broader kind of ongoing demand gen efforts and like what mm -hmm. do I need, what is needed from me that I need to deviate from my current day to day in order to support. So there's just no process. And I think, you know, like, like I was saying earlier, I, you know, that process, one of the big components is how are you getting context and enablement information like to all those different teams at different stages of the process? So I think like, you know, lack of process, lack of communication are probably the two biggest like causes for launch failure. I think, you know, beyond that, it's also, you know, launching too early and launching too late. You know, like I think companies that launch too late, they don't ever learn anything. Launching too early, you ship something that you have a QA that you don't know that yeah. customers actually want. You end up burning all of your kind of external promotional capital on a message that doesn't resonate. And you haven't done the research up front to validate, you know, like you're saying the right thing to the right audience with the right product. And so I think, you know, this is where like, you know, you were saying you've got a soft launch coming up. Yeah, you know, this is where like soft launching versus hard launching is a really important distinction because you can soft launch very early. And there's not really like too early to soft launch and start learning things and getting insights from customers. And this is where like product teams and marketing teams tend to like get confused is because, you know, product wants to ship as fast as possible to start learning things and getting feedback. But marketing doesn't want to announce it until it's like actually delivering value and the messaging has been validated and you know, they know that they're targeting the right customers. So this is where, you know, you should maintain a beta cohort of people that you can go and soft launch to they have had their expectations set around you're getting beta product. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be like buggy. It's going to be missing things. We're doing this so that we can get your feedback, collect that feedback back from them. Also use that as an opportunity to create customer stories, like to collect social proof about like real use cases that people in the wild are putting that new feature or product through. So you can then, when you do your hard launch and you do announce the thing more externally or to your broader user base, you're able to tell that launch story through the lens of customer use cases. And you're able to say, look, we've done our research on this. Not only have we done our research on it, we have customers who are using it. They're getting this value out of it. They've had this learning about how to use it. And then it all just becomes dramatically more concrete when you actually go do that announcement to folks. So yeah. Yeah, you're speaking my language there at the end. That's something I've been harping on, but we're a testimony video company. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, our, our customers don't think of that a lot though. They think I'm gonna use this at the top of the funnel, which makes sense. I'm gonna use it for sales enablement, but there is like a retention and expansion play that I think is underserved mm -hmm. because one, you kind of make the customer look cool as well, which I think is a byproduct of beta. Yeah, you know, they're early adopters, they're in there, they're learning, they're kind of ahead of the curve and yeah. they're the ones helping. So I think as a marketer, I've been afraid of that as well. I don't want to show a crappy product to someone and ruin the experience. Yeah. But there is that flip side, I think, if you position it right, where they can actually feel special about it and they'll put up with a lot and a yeah. lot of bugs if you do it right. Yeah, if you do it right, like as long as you're expectation setting up front, like people will go through a lot of pain to, to give you feedback and like because they feel special, they feel like they get to shape the product. But, you know, like you, you can't just announce the thing and say it's live now if it's bad, you know, like that's where you start to run into problems. But yeah. Yeah. And I think another part there, like as a marketer, it's easy to go to the tactics of how am I going to launch this? What's the go to market? What's kind of the sexy eye catching thing I can do? But a lot of things you mentioned were the non-sexy things, process, you know, planning, making sure everyone's enabled and aware. I mean, that is a product marketer's job, but a lot of companies might not have someone in that role. So if they don't, aside from hire a product marketer, where does that fit? Like, should that be on the dev side, the marketing side? Yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, like, this is a problem that everybody in the company should care about. You know, like this is, yeah, this yeah. is impacting sales. It's impacting marketing. It's impacting products. Like, you know, I, product marketing is the one who gets kind of like 
the they're left holding the bag. They're the ones who have to actually do the work on this. But like one person isn't the person responsible for it. The whole organization is. And so I, you know, generally if you don't have a product marketing team, usually it's like product that does this and products mm -hmm. kind of fulfilling the role of product marketing internally. And even some companies that do have a product marketing team, like product is the one doing this, but you need somebody to drive it because I mean, I, you know, I think there's a, McKinsey did a study two years ago or so where they looked at, you know, thousands of companies, big companies, tiny companies, range of industries. And, you know, hilariously, like, you know, the old things that you think drive launch success, budget, budget, like size of company, you know, like all of these other, what tactics they use, what their strategy was, like none of those things actually mattered when it came to launch success. Like the thing that one, two, and three things that drove effective launch processes for these companies were one that they had a process, had a repeatable process Two that they like communicated effectively internally. And three, I think it was like that they had, had done re like embedded research in the process. And it's like all the unsexy stuff, you know, the, the yeah. tactics don't matter where, how much money you're throwing against it doesn't matter where you're announcing it. You know, like all that stuff is, is fluff as long as you have the right process internally to, to ship the thing. Yeah, it all goes back to prep and execution, which are not as fun and way harder, right? Yeah, than than some of the marketing plans. Like, like, yeah, it's it's like everybody yeah, looks yeah. at it and they're like, "Well, we got to just execute this," and like, "Why don't we just get all this stuff live?" And you know, it's a waste of time to do all this like internal alignment. But that's the yeah. stuff that drives success. <laughs> no, exactly. And then I want to, you know, concrete examples here always help a bunch. And I think the product you're launching is is really interesting. Having felt that need, I also know, like coming up with the idea to solve. It's one thing like, you know, the problem exists, but I'm curious of two things. We're going to talk about how you launch it as one, but I think also what was the impetus or like the aha moment where you thought, oh, we should build this thing. And how did that research process work? Yeah. So, I mean, I had been kind of marinating on this for quite a while. Like even before I joined, before I joined Rippling, you know, I'd been kind of kicking around this idea because I've been through this yeah. like as a product marketer for years and years and years. And yeah, I've tried every tool that you can possibly imagine and none of them cut it. You know, most teams like kind of stitch this stuff together in like docs, spreadsheets, maybe a project management tool and yeah. it's the dumpster fire and nobody knows cross-functionally how to engage with it. There's no repeatability to the process. It, the communication is hard. And so basically a lot of it was personal pain that I'd been through myself. But then, you know, as we were researching it, you know, I, we had, we held probably 60 to 100 customer interviews before we ever like even designed anything and, you know, like talked to a ton of product marketers, kind of tried to understand what their process was, you know, where the pain points were. It was like one of the number one things that was killing them on a day-to-day -day basis. They were all kind of like stitching this stuff together in similar ish docs and spreadsheets. And like, you know, it all kind of like was shades of the same thing, but like slightly different per person. And so we're like, look, like, let's just abstract that out. Look at what this looks like in good format, you know, across these range of industries, across these range of product marketers process. And, you know, then like we started building and, you know, just have embedded customers in, in our process every step of the way, you know, we talk, I talk to customers daily, you know, my co-founders talking to customers regularly and you know, we've like early on had some design partners that were working with us through like Figma designs. So, you know, it's, it's just been an ongoing, you know, continuous process when it comes to collecting customer research. And the nice thing there too, is when it comes to the positioning and even the copy and everything down the road, then it's more like an assembly, assembling exercise than a writing from your head exercise. Yep. You kind of just got to go take what all those customers said, make it coherent and tie it together. Yeah, which always works better. And then I think on the the product launch side is going to be interesting because I think product marketers will get it, salespeople will get it because they've felt the pain. But what's your plan to actually launch it? And you know what processes do you have in place? Yeah, I mean, so it's funny. Like our stage, you know, like we we tend to work with. I mean, we work with a lot of companies that are very very small, but we also primarily, you know, we work with kind of like mid market enterprise companies. So their motions, like obviously, a little bit different than ours um, yeah, yeah. because we're still like. I'm the only marketer and I'm the only salesperson at the company. And so basically, you know, like our process is a lot of just me organizing myself. There's not quite as much like internal enablement needed, but you know, basically like we are, as we're going through this launch, like we've been working with beta customers in market with the pro with the feature that we're launching and collecting feedback through every step of the step of the way. I've been like refining a lot of our, you know, as you were talking about kind of copy and like messaging on the website, it's like, 
like you said, it's an assembly exercise. I'm taking the words that they are telling me about the problems that they have, the words that they're telling me about like what the product's doing for them, kind of assembling that into our narrative and our announcement, you know, like we're going to basically do, we're doing a soft launch. So we're releasing it to our existing customers early in the next couple of weeks. And then we are going to do a hard launch through product hunt and, you know, we're going to do some additional kind of like social and community posting on all the different like owned and owned and earned channels. We've got, we're going to do a little bit of like sponsorship work. So we're working with a couple of like influencers to, you know, promote through their channels in product management world, because we haven't really like targeted product managers quite as much in the past. <laughs> so a couple of different tactics, but you know, like most of it is just the kind of nitty gritty, like, I mean, like you were saying, it's the unsexy, like planning work, you know, like we're going through or define, we've defined, you know, like very clear personas on this, like different messaging where you're creating the collateral needed to communicate those different messages that we need to get across to them. And then like, we're just going to go publish it everywhere that we can once it's, once it's launch day. Yeah, and all that the unsexy work kind of opens up to you to do the tactics correctly. Like yep. if you didn't have that, you wouldn't know which influencers, which communities, yep. where these people live, where they play. We're doing it's funny, we're gonna do a similar thing with the influencer player. We're trying to figure out how to do it because it's new to us. Uh, it's yep. new to most B2B companies. But I do think that's an interesting angle, especially if it's someone who is part of the beta program or cares about the product or can actually speak authentically. It's not Kim Kardashian pitching crypto, it's you know, <laughs> your audience selling something that actually fits. Yeah. Cool. So I think lots of interesting ideas, tips there. I know you post on LinkedIn, a bunch of other places with a lot of this content. So if our listeners do want to connect, learn more, where should they go? Yeah. So our website is habignition.com. And so that's the best spot to go if you want to go sign up for a free version of the product. Email me at Derek at havignition.com. And then, you know, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, I think my handle is Derek Osgood 3 there. So I'm, po I'm posting not quite daily, but you know, on a fairly regular basis, you know, yeah. to get the word out there. <laughs> awesome. So I'll include those links and Derek. Yeah. Thanks for the conversation. It was a lot of fun. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Likewise. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining me on this episode. My key takeaway is just how marketing and product have both moved too far away from the customer. So, you know, customer in the middle product has focused on building and moved out that way. Well, marketing has focused on external things like promotion and leads and, you know, also moved the opposite way away from the customer. So really strong go to market has to have all the inputs and outputs tied together with product, be that marketing, sales, customer success. It sounds easy. It's incredibly difficult, especially at large companies, but this episode really drove home the importance of that for me. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll be back next Tuesday with a new one. See you then.